should all be able to be in a museum right. of some kind right. because, you know, Google is like brings up everything you don't want yeah. people to remember about yeah. you. So well, what I what I what I was reading with with the with the Hall of Fame is I did not know that when you and Carol LeBeau were anchor women that you were the first two anchor woman yeah, team. We were. It had been tried in other markets, but it didn't it didn't fly. But Carol and I had a kind of. Uh, well, we were we were sort of a good cop bad cop act in a way. By the way, she's a skinny brunette. Yes, she is. She's she's lovely. She's hot. Crispin. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He, I, you know, when um, I first met uh, Carol, she was getting married to Tom. Still married to Tom, and uh, I think we'd known each other about two weeks. We show up at her rehearsal dinner in the <coughs> exact same St. John knit. And it was, oh. I know, it was horrifying because it was her <laughs> rehearsal dinner, right? And we looked at each other and we were just getting to know each other as co anchors. And it was one of these black uh, cardigan type um, outfits with, you know, unmistakably a big yellow slash and a big red slash and then, you know, skin tight uh, St. John knit. And we looked at each other and I did the only thing I could think of to do. I went into the bathroom, I took it off. And I put on my jeans and my denim shirt. And I came back out. And she gave me the biggest hug. And she said, Oh, you're a classy bride. She said, That's oh. a girl <laughs> there. Yeah. I said, Well, yeah. it is your effing wedding here. We're <laughs> going to celebrate. Yeah. If it was your wedding, she'd have to take her, 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 <laughs> yeah. her top off. Yeah, you can go naked. I but but you, had, you had, you had, the, you had the, a change of clothes ready? No, I just had, um, we all had like extra clothes because after we were going to be going dancing. Oh, okay. So I wasn't going to be dancing in that hot knit. It was, to tell you the truth, borrowed from sex with Tam. <coughs> so I couldn't afford St. John knit at that time. Could she? I think hers was borrowed too. I think, oh, okay. I think what happened is that we were both dressed by the same woman. I think yeah, I think yeah, somebody, I think that's somebody what there. Because yeah. it was such a distinctive print. <laughs> uh, that's not the first person that tried to Pit, the people did, did, did they try to pit you guys against each other? Did yeah, I think that that was folklore, um, and we were always we had we were both strong women, and we had conversations sometimes that could lead people to think that uh, we were in a cat fight, but we never were. We always respected each other. The Betty Veronica when thing. We, yeah, yeah, exactly. And when we were um, go, both going through tough times, you know, we all go through some real dark days in life if you're lucky enough to live long. Yeah. And we were always there for each other. We still pick up the phone and call oh, each other once in a while. If we, we, you know, we're all at this age now. We're losing our friends. And gosh, we're in a, we're in a suicide uh, epidemic here. Yeah. A couple, I'm thinking yeah. of two people just recently. Um, and now it seems very unusual to, to understand that we are in a suicide epidemic, but what are we really doing about it? You know, and is it because of social media? Not entirely, but certainly the, the feeling that we have easy access to solid, good friendships, which is just entirely not the case. It, it, it more likely will create a stalking situation than will a friendship. Right. As you well know, yeah. And I, just, I, was, I was thinking that. a victim that of stalking myself. Uh, as well, you I, have I, to, I, yeah. I figured I, I figured it might yeah. be. That's how hot no, it is. Nobody's ever stalked me, but uh, that's uh, what you've been getting. Out. If you grow your hair out, you know, really uh, bad. That's, it's the, uh, yeah, it must be the bald. Yeah, if I had hair, I'd be stalked. You look good bald, though. That's what people tell me. Well, all right, so you're, 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 the, you're, the, you're the purveyor style. What do you think of the bald head? Um, I think it's a solar panel for your sex issues. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, uh, that's, that's a good thing. But, and Hannah, I really wanted you to take the lead on this, but. Uh, that's what uh, I, I wanted to talk about other things, and I want to talk about other things later because I don't want this like like your your unfortunate arrest few years ago. I don't want that to define you. I want people to know how uh, amazing and accomplished that you are. Mm -hmm. I don't want the stalking to define you because of how, how accomplished and how wonderful you are. Yeah, but at the same time, I mean, I've been able to take my proposals to Department of Justice. I never thought I'd say that. I've been invited to speak before Congress. I've had my proposals published in the Harvard Journal of Legislation. I mean, these are pretty incredible feats that I never mm -hmm. thought that I'd be able to say. Mm -hmm. um, I've been working with Congressman Schiff, who's incredible. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm actually really proud of it, and I'll be doing something 
because next week I'll be um, part of the American Threat Assessment Professional Conference, which I'll be in the civilian with the FBI and everybody else, and I educate law enforcement. So even though it's weird because I think of myself like, yes, I'm the girl who curated Golden Girls Gone Wild, erotic art on the Golden Girls. Yes, I'm that person too. Yeah. You know, nobody's any one thing, but I feel like all of that, and even like working in reality TV, whatever, has prepared me for what I'm doing now. And if I can help the 7.5 million Americans that aren't celebrities that are being stalked, who, mm-hmm. you know, there's so much domestic violence overlap, and these are who really their their lives are ruined or or, or, or they lose their life, you know. So even though it's a tough subject, I'm I'm really proud of what you I've been able to accomplish. Be. Absolutely, I'm proud. No, I, I'm proud of you too. I'm not, yeah. not saying that. I just uh, and I I saw I I hadn't actually gone back. Uh, to look at the comments that your stalker made the last time you were on the show, oh, yeah. and how uh, incoherent they were, and uh, still out there. Well, well, you no, know, I caught him. Um, that's another whole weird, crazy part of the story. Right. I'll have yeah. to get into that. You trained mm-hmm. yourself for the IP addresses, mm-hmm. right? Oh yeah, I mean that's a very mad. That's not how yeah. I caught him. I mean I no, I mean like I physically had to set up a sting because LAPD wasn't helping me, and that's after they did a 48 hours on right. my story. That yeah. was after oh, I was all over it's, the news. It's very difficult for women to be taken seriously, yeah. even now, which is so shocking. Yeah. Because we have made great strides, but w- you know somehow there's that feeling of oh you caused it it's your fault. Oh yeah, and I, you know, I know that my own experience with my very first radio station in Overland Park, Kansas, mm-hmm. which is out in the middle of a cornfield. Yeah. That radio station was I don't know if it is now, but um, middle of you know the cornfield, and I was doing the seven to midnight. Came home. It was about one o'clock in the morning. Um, had a production shift after the seven to midnight show, and I was followed home. I didn't notice. I was probably listening to some music. And when I got out of my car, I had a, a big box with my headphones in it and, and a bunch of albums. Um, and a guy grabbed me from behind, took me to the ground, uh, punched out uh, two teeth, uh, black eye, uh, tore my shirt off. I was screaming, and I was only about 50 feet from my front door, where my then husband was inside, heard me screaming. Everybody in that apart- small apartment complex heard me. I went to court. He didn't serve a day in jail. He brought his wife, who was uh, one we finally made it to court, um, who was almost nine months pregnant, put her in the front row, and I think that the judge, the male judge, uh, took one look and decided, oh, well. Um, well, I think the father away from the baby, which is awful because yeah. one has nothing to be a father. And he had a prior, too. Okay, so, yeah. yeah. It's never, I mean, I work with so many victims. I, I've helped 13 people physically get restraining orders. Like, I deal with all the time. And it's never that people have these. One of the things I'm trying to do is create um, a registry, much like we have a sex offender registry for people who are stalkers. Because my stalker, for example, like you could have 40 restraining orders against you, and no one is red flagging you as being problematic. There's nobody monitoring you, and you know, having like the problem with the sex offender registry is it is a. There's people who get on it who shouldn't. You know, maybe they were caught having sex in public or urinating or whatever. It is so hard to get convictions with stalking that if you have a stalking conviction, you did it. Like, it's it's right. very clear right. about that. And almost every single time, it's not like, oh, this person was, you know, a productive member of society who's just wonderful and never had a problem. And all of a sudden, they chose one person. Like, that's never that. There's always multiple victims, multiple people, you know, screaming for help along the way. And of course, it gets to where it is now. So I'm not, I'm so sorry, but I'm, I'm not surprised at all that that was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and you know, through my uh, career in rock and roll radio and then television, um, it, it was it got to be a relatively common, expected experience. And I don't know if it leads to a sense of paranoia or distrust, but I do know that it's the flip side of all the fun stuff Absolutely. with fame and money and all of that. And I'm grateful for my career, but it certainly was a learning experience. And, you know, I think that. Well, we, I heard a statistic today that mm-hmm. women, when they've suffered a heart attack, if they have a male practitioner after the heart attack, um, they don't get treated the same at the same level of concern as a woman who has a female doctor. So, and what's the uh, the advocate on this radio this radio station? Yes, it was NPR. Um, said if you have chest pains, you go to the doctor immediately. And if you're not getting the kind of attention you need, you say you have chest pains. No, that's because how you, they that's can't how, ignore it. Well, that's how they, they, well, if you're in the emergency room, that you, you, get, you get run the line, they get chest pains. 
which is, I mean, it, the me I, I can don't get me started in the medical yeah. and how bad, bad it is. But let's hear. I I, I do want to hear your story. I I, yeah. I have heard it. I I, know, I know about it. It's um, well, uh, he referred to himself as.